Hello, my name is Archana, and in this presentation, we will be discussing about positive guidance and discipline. In the presentation, we will be discussing about why positive guidance and discipline is important and what are the ways they support their children, how to imply them, and some of the case studies that has been done till date. What is discipline? Let's start discussing about discipline. Discipline is a quality of being able to behave in a controlled environment where rules and standards are followed. See, like we are in a school or in a home, wherever we are, discipline is a key and a crucial aspect that children need to follow, that they need to behave, they need to be well-mannered, they have to follow the rules. There are so many aspects, but discipline, with the help of positive guidance, it can be followed. Let's see, for example, what is a discipline? In case, if we are in a school, a teacher gets a phone call and the children needs to know that until the teacher is done talking, they have to be disciplined by maintaining inside voice or being quiet until the telephone call is done. This is a discipline and they are controlled in an environment where they follow the rules to be quiet. Discipline helps children to feel boundaries, which are the foundation for their emotional and cognitive learning. For example, let's see like a children or a child is at home and their parents or caregivers are telling them, return home after playing by six o'clock. That means a child is being given a boundary, like they have to return home by six o'clock. So this boundary will set a child, hey, it's six o'clock and I need to go home. This discipline will help them like a foundation and routine rather just being yelled, hey, it's six o'clock, come back home. And that's the boundary for the child. Discipline focuses on positively teaching children how to make good choices and control their actions. The first two points are the best examples for this sentence, like positively teaching children how to make good choices. For example, in case if a child gets late and it is already 6 p.m. Let the child come and talk to their caregivers or an adult. I'm getting late by five minutes. Can I come back? That's the positive change that we can do by having a good discipline. And positively teaching children is, in case if there is a fight, we can tell them, hey, can you please use your words rather getting a fight? So the children can control their actions rather being physical or like hitting a child. The goal of principle includes growth, learning, and positive behavior change. The main goal of the disciplining a child is they are getting a good growth in a positive environment. They are learning from their peers. They are learning from the teachers or adults or a parent in a positive behavior, rather being yelled or rather just crying and throwing a, a fit or a tantrum. In a positive way, discipline can be successful and followed. What is positive guidance? When we try to discipline a child, positive guidance is the best way to teach them discipline and guide them. Positive guidance is a framework that parents, educators, or any caregivers can establish to help children learn acceptable social practice and ways to express their feelings. This can be done both directly or indirectly. Let's discuss about positive guidance. Positive guidance doesn't uh, like getting the children to choose what they want. It's a framework where the parents and educators and the children work together. We guide them by telling acceptable social practice. Like we give them options, we give them choices, we teach them how to express their feelings, like in case if a child doesn't get a, cho a toy that they need, they cry and they fight. So we can guide them by telling, can you use please, sorry, or thank you, or even we can ask questions. Can I have the toy for five minutes or can I have the toy after you are done? These are all of the these are all the examples we will help and guide the child to express their feeling and we can guide them. Every adult caring for children is responsible for guiding, correcting, and socializing. Exactly. I agree to the second option, like we guide them. 
we help them in case if the child is unable to make a choice. We will guide them. We will ask questions. Would you like to play in a slide? Would you like to have a dessert after lunch? Like we guide them. When a child is doing any mistake, we correct them. And we also help them to socialize with their friends. And this is called child guidance with discipline. By encouraging appropriate child behavior, the less time and effort they will spend correcting misbehaviors. For example, in the classroom, they have only one, sun, one science experiment gadget, but it has to be shared between 10 people. We set an environment which will make the child to fight for one time or the one science experiment. So we need to make the environment suitable for the children so that they will just spend less time correcting the misbehavior. They will share with less amount of people and that will be the appropriate for the child behavior so they will not throw a fit or a tantrum. And coming to the end, family specialist also agrees that using physical force, threats and put downs can interfere with the child's healthy development. This is a very, very huge step and a crucial step because a physical force or threat will never help a child grow. Like, for example, if you're home, no TV, no playtime, and the no words will help them, will hurt them deep. So we can ask, we can have an alternative way, like you can have TV time once you're done your lunch, like after your TV time or after your lunch time, you can have TV or if they want a dessert, why don't we finish our lunch in 30 minutes and let's go for ice cream. These are all redirection. These are all alternatives. And the children don't feel threat. Like if you don't do your homework, then there is no playtime. That's a threat. If you don't uh, do your homework, then you're grounded. Then you will have no part time, no TV time, no playtime. So these are all threats or timeouts. Timeouts doesn't help in the long run. So we need to choose alternative methods. So the child's health and development will also grow with these positive guidance. Let's talk about why children misbehave. The top reason why they misbehave is seeking attention. Kids need constant attention. So when their attention gets less or it gets down, they misbehave so that we turn our attention on them. Asserting their independence. When child keeps on going from early stage, even when adolescent, they try to get their independence and that's the reason for misbehave. Inadequate understanding of rule. This is one of the crucial steps when we uh, come up with early childhood, like they couldn't understand the rule. For example, let's see it's lunchtime and they have to line up and the teacher says, go line up, take a plate, grab a bottle of milk or some fruits, go back to your lunch table, sit in a row, eat, and then throw the liquids to one side and the solids to the other side. These are a lot of rules a child brain can process. So inadequate understanding of the rule make them misbehave and that will end up in a consequence. So let's go ahead slow or let's go ahead two rules at a time so their brain can process and they can adhere to the rules. Copying actions from peers. We always say that what a monkey does, a monkey do. So it's exactly like not calling the children monkey, but it's just like a metaphor. When a child misbehaves or show a new action, the other child wants to do the same thing. They copy their peers and that makes them to misbehave. Last but not least, when a child is feeling bored or hungry or stressed or have a very strong emotion like not sharing a toy, crying, they misbehave. So we have to look for cues like what's making them to misbehave. Let's talk about punishment. Punishment is a consequence when, hap when, it, ha when it happens when a child is not behaving or is not understanding the procedure. Let's talk about the difference between positive guidance and punishment. Positive guidance emphasize on what a child should do and punishment on the other side, it emphasizes what child should not do. Like you cannot go out right now. Like on what a child should do on the other side, like for the same example, you can have playtime after you're done with your lunch. So we will tell the child, you can do this, 
But when it comes to punishment, we'll say, no, it is restricted. And positive guidance is an ongoing process. We constantly, we continuously help the child to grow by positively guiding them. But punishment is a one-time occurrence. When a child throws a tantrum, they get punished by not going out. That's a one-time occurrence, but it is not repetitive. Positive guidance is an alternative way when a child behaves, like redirection. When a child behaves, we try to alternate them. Hey, why don't you go read a book and then come play in a quiet area? Or why don't you go take the toy and then come back for the other? So we redirect them. But in the other side, punishment is a consequence for inappropriate behavior. Like in case, if a child hits or gets physical with the other child, we, we give a consequence. No, it's we're not hitting like you get a timeout for three minutes. That's a consequence or a punishment. Positive guidance, on the other hand, it builds self-esteem. A child is not being threatened. A child is not being punished. So they try to learn from their mistakes and that builds their self-esteem. On the other side, punishment, it defeats self-esteem. Like at times it makes them to do more or it doesn't help them to grow. And positive guidance sets an example to follow, like a routine when a class teacher has a schedule or a routine and positively guiding them every day, they set an example so that daily they will be followed. And punishment on the other side, it insists on obedience, like we have to obey to follow the rules and if not, a consequence will be happening. These are all the choices between positive guidance and punishment. Let's see some of the case studies and strategies that we can help, which proactively help in a home setting or in a classroom. Number one will be using positive language or right tone. Let's say, use your inside voice, sit in your chair. Like instead, we will not use like harsh or loud tones like don't run, don't climb, hey. So like yelling or a harsh tone, let's use positive language or the right tone. Give clear direction, like giving one in instruction at a time will help the child to focus on their attention and they will not forget the direction. Like, can you please stand in a line? And the third option will be offering choices. When it is time to clean up, let's say, would you like to start with the books or do you wanna go with the blocks? So giving choices or offering choices will help the child to choose which one rather having a retraction. And the fourth idea will be redirection. Redirecting behavior can help them to shift children's focus from an undesirable behavior to a more positive expression. Like when there is a misbehave happening, we re redirect them. That's why don't you go play with your other friend until she's having you know, a positive mood change or until she's done playing with that toy. And the fifth is follow routine. Creating a consistency with the help helps a child to clear expectations. When a routine is followed, children knows what is expected from them. In case if it is a class time, they will know when there is a routine. Nine o'clock is reading time. 10 o'clock is recess. 11 o'clock is science, 12 o'clock is lunch. When a routine is followed day by day, the child will know what they are expected from them. And the fifth option will be showing interest. We can observe and check what the child is really interested in, whether they like to paint, whether they like to draw, like they like stacking toys. These are all the clues that we get when we show interest on the child. And how families help in guidance. Families are a huge part which collects with a child and the teacher so that a family can help them with guiding. Discipline and guidance are deeply connected with the values and beliefs of the family. More families, like almost all the families, have their own cultural beliefs and their family values, and that will help them to discipline and guide, and guide the child. Spend time together when you are a family, like have at least one meal or dinner or lunch or any meal together. If it's not possible, 
we can read bedtime stories or we can just talk about their day like how was your day how did it go just we will spend some quality time with the child and keep perspective it's one of the crucial and very important aspects of guiding a child is keeping perspective and uh, we also know that disciplining a child it's not going to be easy it is frustrating but we should never give hope we should keep on trying new strategies new ways but never keep trying never stop trying look for the reason behind when there is a consequence when there is a misbehave we will we should never come to a conclude that the always the mistake is on the child instead we should communicate we can try communicating with the child and we will know the cause of the behavior these are all few steps that a family can help guiding a child at home and let's come to cultural practice like family and culture families are bound by cultural beliefs and practices worldwide and we have so many cultures which are known to us like hinduism christianity islam buddhism judaism or jainism there are so many beliefs and cultural backgrounds and each culture has their own beliefs when it comes to discipline or positive guidance like culturally like some culture restricts few act actions and when parents teach those beliefs to the child from young age they will know that they have to restrict doing these things parents teach children about their cultural beliefs from young age which shape their minds cultural practice it's like a daily routine or daily practice some families have like praying to god and asking them for guidance and these techniques or these practices and beliefs help the child shape their mind from young age culturally or religious religiously each culture has unique core values and beliefs which cultivates norms that follow through through generations yes the second and third point core like correlates with the religious because each family has their core values each religion has their core values when they teach when we teach those core values from a young age it creates and cultivates norms that the people should follow which has been followed from generation and religion makes people to be mindful as it teaches the source is god and he is always watching when there is an outside spirit like god religiously and cultural practice will teach the child that there is an almighty watching them so they have to be mindful and choosing good words and good actions many religion teaches about sins and their after effects children from young age are aware of these beliefs and follow with moral morality of course few religions have sins and they talk about sins if from a very young age and they will also talk about their effects and their pros and cons even a sin is made and children culturally or religiously they are aware like if we do the actions which are not which are prohibited and their morality will be questioned so they stop doing sins that means religiously like the things that they are not supposed to do they are not allowed to do like the most main thing is having or consuming alcohol or using tobacco or talking behind uh, the people these are all few sins which has been passed to them that they are they shouldn't be following it so even culturally we can provide positive guidance to the children from any age these are all the case studies which has been made for positive guidance which can be accomplished from home let's have family meetings by having family meetings by having real choices compliments agreement respect self regulation helping others and problem solving these are all the techniques and case studies that has been followed for a positive guidance let's talk about real choices real choices are when there is a conflict or a misbehave happening in the home we can have these real choices we will just ask them to switch between them in case when we have a when we have a conflict happening like a sibling a sibling is fighting with the other sibling like what do you want to do right now let's rotate the wheel and whatever comes in we do it this time let's let's have a family meeting and talk about it or let's count to 1 to 10 and cool off our 
our mind or we can just walk away take a walk get some fresh air and we will talk fresh or let's close this game and open a new game so these are all the positive guidance to avoid having a conflict in the home and these are all the positive guidance which can be followed at school a teacher can know the child teaching self-control offer choices natural and logical consequence consider emotions intervene when necessary i messages that means expressing their feeling setting limits these are all the activities which a teacher can follow in the school let's see for example intervene when necessary when the, when a consequence is happening a teacher can stand back and observe but intervene only when necessary so that that will help the child to analyze their problem and it will just uh, focus on their understanding rather just getting jumping in and giving them a hand it will help them to think and it will come to a process okay this is not the time to do let's go ahead and teaching self-control when a child is angry we, we can teach them self-control okay it's not my time let me move back let me go talk to the teacher rather getting physical and also we will consider their emotions some kids they are naturally strong some kids they do cry we need to uh, give their positive guidance they need the hug they need to emote their emotions so we need to understand the child we need to know the child and give them logical consequences that means like not putting them away we can have logical consequences like redirecting them to, and we can tell them like if you just keep moving one more time then it will be taken away we will give them options we will give them choices give them logical consequence these are all the guidance which we can follow at school coming then it's the end of the slide and thank you all for listening for my presentation thank you